Welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and today I'm going to talk to you. Uh, well, I wanted to do a mix kind of of a um, review video because today is Halloween. It's October 31st. So happy Halloween everyone. I hope you, you will be celebrating, you know, in whatever way you can. I don't know if you are in a country that celebrates Halloween. I'm not. We celebrate it more kind of in a school environment or parties or, you know, it's not because we have a tradition per se. But many people in my country like Halloween and get a costume to celebrate Halloween with their friends in a club or something so that's not my case <laughs> but um, I really enjoy Halloween I think it's a really fun um, celebration and I enjoy as you know I do my Halloween month or my horror month I should say so you know I enjoy it and I think it's really fun and a good way and an opportunity to dive in in different genres talking about liter literature so that's you know what I'm here to do um, and so today I have an idea to well I'm going just to say it so I wanted to review Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and you maybe are asking, so you didn't read it? Yes, I did. But I read it, I read it in a Portuguese edition. But in my Portuguese edition, um, I, there, there isn't an information about which edition of Frankenstein is it because Frankenstein has the first edition, so the 1918 um, edition, so the first year where it came out, but then in 1831 Mary Shelley did edit, I'm sorry, edit some parts in the, uh, in the original text and I wanted and I, I only find out about this when I was uh, searching or researching a bit more about it. Uh, and I didn't have the time to uh, order because I, some, well, here in my country, I, first of all, after I found out about it, um, I wanted to. Uh, read the added edition so from 1831 and uh, I wanted to read it if I'm if I am going to buy that edition I wanted to read it in the original so I wanted to read it in English but here in my country we didn't have available or at least I couldn't be sure if the editions were from the first edition, so from 1818, or from the edition of 1831. So, I just found out a place where I could buy it uh, in English and specifically from the 1831 edition, so the added edition and I wanted an edition that had a um, preface or an introduction, you know, that had uh, texts about the, the story that could help me understand the context or, you know, with added value, you know what I mean? And I found the perfect edition 
of course, is Penguin Classics. <laughs> I, I heard so much things about uh, Penguin and how they always, or most of the time, they uh, edit editions of books with support texts. I don't know if the, this is the right expression, but that would be the, the way, the literal translation of the way we would say it in Portuguese. So I'm going to leave the, um, the covers of the editions, so the, the 1818 edition and the 8031 edition from Penguin Classics. I'm going to do specific Penguin because that's the editor, that's the publisher that I'm going to buy from. So, uh, but of course you can research for wherever publisher you want. That I think that's a given. So, okay, so I wanted to do a review of Frankenstein, to do a review of some support texts and books that I find out with friends or find out by myself or from other youtubers talking about them but you know as i want to do a, a more more lengthy video and a more in-depth not in-depth in a way i don't want to give so much and talk about so much about the plot because i think that's not my point, that's, that's not my objective, per se. I wanted to do more a context, a historical context, how um, Frankenstein came to be. But so, uh, I wanted to uh, give you a video today and as a tradition that I want to maintain in, in the horror month, is to every 31st of October to do a non-fiction book about the genre, about detail of that has to do with horror, death, mystery, thriller, surrounding the genre or surrounding an author or that wrote something like, uh, about the um, books about the genre, surrounding anything to have to do with the concept of the horror month. And so, today I want to talk to you maintaining the theme of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. I heard about this book with a YouTuber, Amy. I'm sure you know her. And this, I'm talking about Mary's Monster by Lita Judge or judge. I don't know how well to pronounce it, but here is the cover. And this book is, I think it's targeted to YA, but this is a non-fiction book uh, about the life. It's like a biography, but in a different type of way. A biography about Mary Shelley. So since her childhood or more her early teenage years till um, she wrote Frankenstein and then published Frankenstein and a bit of a aft afterwards about her life uh, after Frankenstein. So I can say this will be a preamble of, <laughs> I suppose, the next video I will do about the book in itself and then support books that I want to refer in that said video. So today will be everything or some aspects about Mary Shelley life. And of course, the book in itself, her great work. Frankenstein. I'm going to put, I'm trying to do something different in this video. So I'm going to be, why? Well, because this book is written in verse, not because it is poems. So if you don't like poetry, 
you won't be deterred from reading this book because it's not like it has uh, rhymes, rhymes or this is like a a poetry text is not there's is not like that although it's written I can show you so so this is the first pages the presentation this book is gorgeous it's black and white uh, black and white maybe not so much but black gray and white it has illustrations in every page it's really beautiful and well I can and I will show you the introduction um, so this has everything to do with Mary and her monster as the title says so I'm going to read to you the prologue that I think is wonderful and is like a um, starting point for the tone of this book. So the prologue begins with the title The Creature. Most people didn't believe Mary Shelley, a teenage girl, unleashed me, a creature powerful and murderous enough to hunt their dreams. They expected girls to be nice and obey the rules. They expected girls to be silent and swallow punishment and pain. She was cast out from society because she loved a married man. Her friend revealed her. Her father banished her from his home. But she did not hide. She was not silenced. She fought against the cruelty of human nature by writing. She conceived me. I took shape like an infant, not in her body, but in her heart, growing from her imagination till I was bold enough to climb out of the page and into your mind. Now Mary is the ghost, whose bones have turned to dust, and it is I who live on. But her voice, she wrote my story, and now she will reach beyond the grave and tell you her own. Well, what did you think? Um, I show you the B-roll, I'm hoping. <laughs> it was on time and it was good enough for you to have an idea of what to expect in this book. So, as I was saying, this is targeted to YA, so this is a more di dynamic kind of experience with the illustrations and the text in verse, so that it wouldn't be a simple book with words and phrases written down without any um, uh, anything appealing, you know? So I think as Frankenstein is such an iconic story, this author, Lita Judge, Lita Judge um, did something remarkable in my opinion, because uh, she achieved a work where it's not usual, you know, traditional, and she will let you know and inform you about the life of Mary Shelley uh, in an original way. So I'm, I'm really very grateful because it was a wonderful experience to read through these pages and read their text in an enveloping kind of way because the illustrations set the tone for what she was telling us. And it was really uh, submersive to kind of or almost getting to Mary Shelley's head. Of course, she is extrapolating from uh, letters that she could be presented to 
So in the author's note at the end of her book, she says that um, she represented the details of Mary's life by weaving the actual, the actual events as documented in her journals, co copious letters and later biographies with the themes she and Shelley wrote about in their creative work. So, you know, uh, this is a book that uh, even if you weren't in the target age, I think is wonderful for you to pick it up because you know, as I was saying, you will have an immersive experience. So, and it, as you could see from my B-roll, the illustrations are beautiful. And I, I think I can say that everyone can uh, appreciate a wonderful and beautiful work of art. I think this can be said as art. Of course, an interpretation of the author, but again, an opportunity to be more open to new interpretations from the monster or the creature, from Mary it itself. So yeah, I, th I think it's wonderful. So the book begins, so the first chapter, that's part one, it's called Exile and it begins on June 1812. So through this reading, of course, if you have research in Wikipedia even for the life of Mary Shelley, many things that you will find here are available in those type of sites. You know, have the experience from myself uh, through the lens of this author about Mary Shelley's life. So, through this reading, uh, I was able to know that Mary Shelley was the daughter of, we can say, somewhat famous writers or authors. Perhaps not in a conventional type of thing that you, you can expect from authors because her mother, Mary Wollstonecraft, was a feminist because she, better, her father beat her mother and she was witness of those type of that type of behavior and when she grew up she became a feminist and she wrote uh, some books about feminism some of it some one of the most famous ones is called a, Vind a vindication of the rights of women this i didn't know the father of Mary Shelley was, well, he considered himself an anarchist and he had a close relationship with, with politicians in England and he wrote many books about how people didn't have the need for kings uh, and they were able to govern themselves and they wouldn't need a government or kings to do so. So he had um, not so popular opinions uh, and he had um, a small publisher and he would help other authors to live, he would give money to them without <laughs> well he would kind of lose money trying to help authors and that will become a problem so Mary Wollstonecraft so the mother of Mary Shelley died really young died I think 10 days or so after Mary Shelley was born uh, and we find out also that Mary Wollstonecraft had already was already in a relationship so before Mary's father Mary Shelley's father and she had a daughter of 
that said relationship called Fanny. And Fanny and Mary Shelley were really close and they really liked each other. And a few years later, her, their father would marry another woman and she wasn't really, well, <laughs> in a way she was the cliché um, stepmother, you know, not, not because, well, at least in this book is never mentioned that she will beat them, but you know, she was kind of mean, she was, I imagine her with a really uh, irritant, voice uh, <laughs> and she's let me show you so she's drawn like this so as you can see it's really a cliche stepmother but you know and because of it Mary Shelley asked her father to go live with friends of her father for a while, you know, because Mary was a bit, not rebellious per se, but she would stand up for, against her stepmother. And so with an excuse for she be, to her correct her behavior, behavior, she convinced her father to let her live for a while with her, his friends. And so he uh, con concurred with her and so, and so she went to Scotland uh, and what would be a few months became two years and she grew accustomed to the land, to the people and when she came back she was like a stranger to the family and she felt like a stranger uh, Principally to Fanny. Fanny was a bit cold with her, but you know. Uh, and so, and so something I didn't mention is that the stepmother bring uh, or brought uh, their her um, son and daughter, so Claire and Charles and uh, Mary did get along with Claire and something that Mary's father, so Goodwin, he called, he is called, or his last name is Goodwin, incentivated Fanny and Mary to do was to read their mother's books. And so for uh, a tender year, they were knowledge about the works of Goodwin and also Mary Wollstonecraft. And something that they knew about their mother was, again, that she had a previous relationship and that she, during the French Revolution, she went to France, she went to Paris and was there right at the time where that happened. So in a way she was um, a revolutionary herself, their mother, and well, she was a progressive, you know, so she was ahead of her time. And we get to, to understand that a lot of the influences uh, of her mother and of their mother and their father went to their, to them. So they, they were really influenced by that because Mary Shelley um, was a reader from young age. That is not something that is mentioned like directly in this book, but that is something that you can get out of it because Mary was really interested in science and biology and physics and um, so science in a whole and she read scientific articles and she was or she tried to be along with the novelties about science 
Uh, and when she comes back from Scotland, um, she will understand that a young man is a fan of uh, her father, Goodwin, and he considers himself like a son to him, and he's rich, so he comes from rich families, or a rich family, and he considers himself a poet, so he also writes, and he wants to be famous um, for his, his work. And Mary gets to know this, this young man, and right away they kind of click, and they would go out together, so... Uh, oh, he's called Shelley. And so Claire, Shelley and Mary would get along the river and Mary and Shelley would talk about many subjects. And one or many of the subjects would be about would be about galvanism, alchemy, gravity, astronomy and so on. So Shelley was a pair or a, um, an equivalent interested man in science as Mary Shelley. And so right away she was she was fond of him. Uh, so galvanism in here is really important. So I won't say exactly why but it has something to do with Frankenstein. So if you want to know more, go research something about Calvinism. So this word right here, because that's really important. And I can say to you right now, this will be this type of discussions and conversations uh, will be the inspiration or the um, you know the little lights that will be triggering Mary Shelley to write Frankenstein so go research some things about Calvinism and then in my later video you will find out why I ask you to so in the first glance Fanny wasn't really Oh, she didn't thought it was a good idea to marry to get involved with Shelley and she warned her about about it but you know it was too late at that time because Mary was already she had set her mind but something that she didn't know was that Shelley was already married and so when um, Goodwin, so Mary's father, found out about these two, he wasn't so fond of the idea and he forbidden Mary to see him, to see Shelley. And it was a frustration for Mary because she thought of any person her father would understand, you know, because her father uh, married Mary's mother, who had a daughter already with other men, another man, you know. So this is a thing that it's mentioned in this book, and you will get, you know, the feeling that Mary was having at that time, but you know. What, what will she do? Well, you have to read it to find out. I'm going, to, I wanted to say what happened, but you know, I don't want to take the fun out of it in, to, in the totality. So if you don't know anything about Mary Shelley's life, don't go research for it. Read this book first. And then if you want to know more, go to research other biographies, go on Wikipedia, you know. So you will have to figure out what happened. But something that is mentioned 
um, is that Shelley is kind of a haunted man or something like that. His behavior is not totally stable. So Mary will in many occasions say that, that he has a Saturn or a dark side of his personality. Not in a way that he's violent, at least it's not mentioned in this book, but you know, he has depression type of um, flows in, in time during his life. And so Mary will become a mother, but she will have some, some things unfortunate happening. Um, and it becomes a point where Claire, so her stepsister, will say to Mary that she uh, know or she knew she get in contact with a personality um, called Lord Byron and that he he was in England and she got to know him uh, and that Mary should know him as well and you know because as Shelley was married uh, the relationship between Shelley and Mary became a bit scandalous, right? And so they were kind of isolated from society. But this Lord Byron was known... So Lord Byron was an author, a writer as well. And he was known to be eccentric, to be... So Claire says to Mary, to her, for her not to worry, because he's even more scandalous than we. <laughs> so he was an irreverent kind of personality as well. He didn't, uh, was, you know, subtle, should we say. And his work was kind of scandalous, as Claire said. So, um, the Corsair, the Corsair, I don't know how to say it, was a poem by Lord Byron set in a Turkish harem. It was an epic su success selling 10,000 10, copies the very morning it was released. But there is a phrase here that says, but a man is more famous than his work. Newspapers make him sound like the devil incarnate. Readers pretend to be horrified by his recent divorce while rushing to buy more papers filled with stories of his debauchery and scandalous affairs. Now he is reported to be living with his half-sister Augusta and even to be father her child. So you know, he... <laughs> He was a personality, a gossip topic. So Lord Byron invites Claire, Mary and Shelley to go to Geneva in Switzerland to pass a few, you know, a month or so with him there. And they accept and they go. And there in Geneva or Geneva, they go to a wonderful place. They were expecting good weather, but that's not really what happens. Well, because the, um, the hotel guests were whispering tiresome rumors about them because they were known, you know. Uh, so they decide, because Byron rented the Villa Diodati, from the family that hosted John Milton. And so they go there, so they depart at once to live like fallen angels in Milton's Paradise Lost. So you have here a reference. And in Villa Diodati, the weather grows worse and they, they get stuck indoors. At first it is fun, shutters banging, rain pouring, wind howling, 
candles blowing out, we gather by the fire to read Dante's Inferno. We debate the meaning of Greek mythology and Prometheus' eternal punishment. Then Byron's mood grows even more macabre, and he turns to reading ghost stories from a book he found in the villa. But he grows disgusted by the weak plots and throws the book down. And he says, I challenge you all to write one of your own. So it's the thing or the, the click starts here. And this is a famous story about how Mary Shelley Frankenstein came to be. And I heard something about it, but in this book I got, you know, the, as you can see, So this here will be Lord Byron, this will be Shelley, and he w w and here will be Mary and Claire. And so I heard something about it, but I thought it was their uh, other people, other friends from the group, but apparently it wasn't so. But of course, I have to go to other fonts to confirm this. But something that he said is that it was their Dr. Polidori. So this was um, a person that was accompanying Lord Byron. And he was there when Lord Byron uh, announced the challenge. He says, Byron enjoys the young daughter's company when Polidori enlivens a rainy evening recounting gaulish tales from medical school, detailing students lurking in cemeteries, robbing, robbing graves. Byron leans in to hear more about stolen cadavers, cadavers, <laughs> cadavers and forbidden dissections, dissections. But then he grows bored when Polidori reads from a play he has written about vampires. What a fool, he sneers. So, there's a, a story or a short story or a novella that was written by Polidori that I'm very interested in reading as well. And it's called... Or it, or it is vampire or the vampire. So one or the other. And if I'm not mistaken, this story is included in the Penguin Classics, the edition from 1931. So the edition I want to buy. You know, as you can see, there's a whole thing surrounding Frankenstein that I wanted to bring to my video, but as I don't have yet that edition, as I don't have some other things and books that I wanted to bring to my video, I thought to do kind of an introduction to the theme, talking about Mary's, Mary Shelley life, life, I'm sorry. And um, so we start the the project and then i'm going to bring you a video well i will bring you a video with more stuff with more stuff to talk about you know okay so so then it tells more a bit about the stay in geneva something that a commentary that i wanted to well that i wanted to talk to you about so I'm going to read from this page and this is uh, still in Geneva and after that sad night or a few nights later in the villa that the, is titled Carousel of Nightmares, 16 June 1816. The lightning is too sinister for us to walk back and forth our own cottage so we spend the night at the villa where the men stay up talking about death and cadavers 
cadavers and galvanism. Like a nervous rat, Polidori jabs at Shelley thoughts. I have seen scientists, he says, animate the corpses of their dead dogs with electric electricity. Shelley's eyes glisten in their bruise-colored sockets. His mind holds a thousand thoughts of what is real and what is beyond imagining. He shouts, Men, perhaps, not God, could bring the death back to life. He slams his fist so hard against the table, the plates rattle like bones. Galvanism will allow men to create life. <laughs> and then, in the other page, What do men know of creating life? Mary goes. I am sickened they talk so easily of men, not women, creating life. It is men, not women, who march with armies across countries pillaging and burning villages, leaving children to starve. Now, men aim their ambitions on conquering nature? Shelley and Polidori are wrong to envision su such things. Science gives us the ability to pull back the skin of life and reveal the truth of things. It allows us to understand the mysteries of mo mountain making and falling stars. But knowledge isn't meant to be held as a weapon in a, belt, in a battle to defy our fates and manipulate life over death. Evil lodges too easily in men's hearts. What will happen if they assume the power to create life? So I thought uh, this was a really um, interesting remark and interesting thought. Of course, I'm supposing the author is extrapolating some things and a bit fictionalizing some things that she found through the letters, through the, the journals, through the news, you know, um, the, the thing I said before. But I find it interesting to, of course, maybe she shouldn't do this, but even so, I found it a really interesting thought, so I, I wanted to share with you. So after this, um, she will say, I can't stop thinking. Shelley's words echo over and over in my thoughts. Men, perhaps, not God, could bring the dead back to life. So this picture... And then it goes on, dead dogs, animated corpses. The death, the dead back to life. And then we go by um, spring of passages where Mary's be, where Mary begins to have nightmares and it's all about the conversations that they she has been um, having through the years and the last conversations in the villa thinking of gal galvanism electricity biology men and women men giving life you know so as you can see and so it it becomes the spark of of the story of frankenstein at first writing feels like falling where there is nothing to hold on to to keep from slipping off the edge of the world but then the dark presence of another begins to whisper from the corners of my mind and this shadow grows and touches my own. 
Together, we take one step toward finding a word, and then another, and another, until the struggle drops away, and the only thing that is left is everything that matters. So, as you can see, here is the beginnings of the story of Frankenstein. And so, then she has the support of Shelley, so he um, incentivates her to continue writing. Um, so, then some stuff happened with Lord Byron that I'm not going to tell you. Um, then uh, some st stuff happened in their lives that will lead Mary to feel guilty and it will, well, two, hap two events will happen, yeah, so some dark stuff, but read it to find out, okay, I think, and here it is, other pa another passage, so she took nine months to complete Frankenstein, and I'm going to try to leave a bureau of the page that I'm in. So, nine months after I began writing. March 1817. A slice of moon rises to light the black March sky. Shelley, Claire and the children are sleeping. As I quote the last words from the Federal Quill and complete my story. My belly quickens with the child I carry, but I feel as if a long labor is over, and my eyes are peering into the eyes of a new offspring, those of my creature. So there we go, here is another illustration. So something that happened, it was when um, she tried to publish to publish Frankenstein, the pub the editors of advise her to not give her her name because uh, it says here because the publisher insists readers will never buy it if they know a woman wrote it anonymous just like my unnamed creature. So yes, this is a curiosity about Frankenstein. So Frankenstein is the name of Victor Frankenstein. So it's the last name of uh, the young man who came to um, create the creature. So the creature never has a name um, because Victor never gives a name to the creature. He, he just creates her or creates it. Sunken, sunken hope. March 1818, reviewers loathe Frankenstein and condemn its author for his uh, atheistic beliefs. I grow afraid of being discovered and having their hatred directed, directed toward me, though secretly I rejoice too in their hate, heated discussions because my work isn't ignored. Shelley isn't so fortunate. So, we are forced to flee, this time to Italy, when Londoners unleash hatred viller than we, we've ever felt before. So this is happening because, uh, it's not just because of Frankenstein being published. Um, I didn't read the um, the completed verses, so it's something in the middle that I didn't read to you, because I didn't want to. I didn't want to point. <laughs> uh, so something has happened, and that's why they are forced to leave England, and so they go to live in Italy, as it said there. 
and Mary feels feels cursed. Uh, and Ma uh, Shelley's behavior become, becomes more unstable um, and she Mary will become widowed. And some time will pass, she will come back to England. Redemption. I have come home to find my creature. He is the center of attention. Frankenstein has been adapted into a play. Audiences are pouring into theaters. Playgoers recoil in horror as my creature bursts on stage with a crash of thunder. Oh, how they love being frightened by him. Angry placard bearers march London streets trying to block this vile and monstrous drama, but their threats only excite people's curiosity about my book. I feel redeemed. My creation stands on the threshold of immortality. We can affect the lives of generations to come if we are brave enough to open the wings of our imagination and create. So this is almost over. Then we have an epilogue that the title is The Present. Mary is dead nearly 200 years. Her corpse rests within her grave, but her spirit whispers eternally through me, her creature. It is I who keep her faith alive. So then, um, at the end of it, so this, the epilogue is the end of it, right? Um, but then, after the matter, <laughs> we have more about Mary Shelley and Frankenstein. So right here. So this is the author adding some information. So as you can see, this is not a factual biography, you know. This is more um, facts with fictionalized verses. So you have here a little bit of um, fictionalized biography, but it's not in a traditional type of book, you know. So. I think you will love it. Uh, you can say, oh, this is not for my age. Who cares? You know, who cares, really? This is a wonderful work. Uh, I hope my bureau was good enough for you to have a perception and a more real, um, real perception of the illustrations and of how the verses are structured so and i hope you have enjoyed it and you found it beautiful and yeah i i really love this book and i thought that the life of mary was something or somewhat fascinating because you know she was only 19 when she wrote frankenstein and when she published it and as you can see she lived she has lived so much till the point of publishing Frankenstein. Oh, when she came back to England, she was 24, I think. Um, so the, the story had had some time to be popularized in England. Um, but as you can see, she lived and she, she had um, full life you know her experiences her being a mother so young you know of course we are talking about a period where um, that will happen really young but you know to have lived with a, a bit unstable man and with a married man and confronting society uh, through the scandal and still being with him you know um, of course the father when she came back i don't think i mentioned this the father the goodwin didn't um, open his arms to take mary again in his house so they lived in uh, another 
place uh, with their little money that they have um, and they were kind of ostracized by society. So, you know, to live through that and to, you know, of course, marry and up to have friends like Lord Byron, because when she came back to, to England, she wanted to give her creation, her work, her own name, and to be known that Frankenstein was written by a woman. Um, and Lord Byron had um, a, 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 big, a big, big role in that because he pub public, publicly, publicly, public, publicly, what? You understand. <laughs> um, wrote letters to uh, confirm that Frankenstein was written by Mary Shelley. So, this was a fascinating reading. Um, I knew so much about Mary's life and, you know, of course, with a sprinkle of the author's point of view about her story, of course, but I don't think it takes away the, the art and the, the, run, the wonderful experience of this particular work and book. So I highly advise you, and as I said before, this is part one, and I will bring you when, I don't know, because I have to acquire the books first, so uh, that, and I have to read them, so it may take a while, but uh, I promise you that I will bring you that video. We will discuss here the story of Frankenstein and also some support texts about the book. So, I hope you have enjoyed it. Happy Halloween, everyone. I hope you go uh, celebrate wherever you are. Um, however you can so happy happy halloween and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already uh, don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on instagram i'll be posting there whenever i have